every single setup in in the Horizon production was unique. So it wasn't like we were going for another uh, day at the office. It was how do we figure out this crazy challenge before us? The camera sees 360 everywhere. So if we were to move the camera, which we wanted to, we didn't want everything to be static, where do we hide the person who normally moves the camera, which is the dolly grip? Or I'm usually behind the camera. In this case, nobody could be around. So we had the unique challenge of rolling the camera, running and hiding, and if we wanted to move it, we had to invent our own ways of moving it so there was no body in shot, literally. There, there's always something that you can hide behind or you just get creative and like suddenly there's a snow pile that everybody's going to be behind now or um, trees, you know, trees are your best friends. Get behind a tree, duck behind the hill. I've had some phenomenal offices. I've been, you know, sitting on a beach in Haida Gwaii and I've had a, a laptop set up with this wonderful ocean view and I'm dodging between the surf and, and again trying to stay out of, out of sight with the, uh, with the rest of the crew, keeping away from the camera and what the camera can see. So in the Winnipeg airport, we actually used the RC car to travel in between the dancers as they did their dance. It was very difficult because I was controlling the RC car from the second level of the airport, hidden away behind a pillar and trying to look around the corner carefully and basically navigate this car between 20 dancers. I did hit a few of them a few times. All of the crew were new to me. They were all extremely technical. I was amazed at them on a daily basis. They're all MacGyvers. No one ever saw where we were going until we got there. Basically, like you showed up and you saw what we had to do and then you saw what you had and you had to make it work, so. One of the most challenging uh, shoots in this production was this incredibly beautiful moment in Tobomori working with the Canadian National Synchro Team. Off the shelf equipment didn't exist to do the job. So uh, the night before we did the shoot, uh, I managed to uh, put together a 300 foot speaker, underwater speaker cable that had a junction box that was wrapped up in saran wrap. And they're in freezing cold water. These are all like Olympic level athletes and we're making them do something that is very different from anything they've ever done. The swimmers were such troopers. They would go through the routine over and over again without breaking. Shooting 360 wildlife is exactly the opposite of how you shoot wildlife traditionally. You can put on a long lens and snipe them from, you know, a kilometer or, you know, half a kilometer away. And, you know, you get beautiful close-ups, but to shoot it on a fisheye lens is just exactly not what you want to do. So it's really, really a lot of luck and we were blessed that they came. We just saw a path that they were taking. Sam put the camera down and the first shot, they came right over top of the camera and it was the best shot. I think it's this one right behind us here. One of the most memorable uh, shots I worked on were the beluga whales up in Churchill. We flew up to this very remote area of Manitoba to essentially spend time with these amazing creatures which were in abundance everywhere. But what we didn't realize is you have to keep moving. You can't sit in one spot. So we ended up towing our rig about 70 feet behind the boat and basically trolling for belugas. We were able to draw in large groups of these whales that would come up behind the boat and be extremely inquisitive about the actual camera in the water. They've seen these boats, they've seen these scuba divers, but they hadn't seen this weird orb-like thing flying through the water. So it created a lot of interest with all the belugas and as you can see, they, they come right up to it. The dog sledding was absolutely beautiful. You could tell that the mushers and their handlers loved the dogs. The dogs love to run. They live to run. The setup for that was tricky in order to stabilize the camera so it didn't look bumpy the whole time that you watched it. Ray was backwards on the dog sled holding the camera going around the track about seven times. What I thought was gonna be the ride of my life ended up being a little bit disappointing in the end because what they didn't tell me was when these dogs run, they run so hard, they're going for it, they poop the whole time. They are defecating. I don't think you'll see it, but I smelled it really bad the entire time. I'm on my back, it was a 20 minute ride and the smell was unbelievable. I'll never forget it as long as I live and I'll never go on another dog sled ride as long as I live. <laughs>
I've had one of the funnest years for a long time and it has a lot to do with the people I've worked with and the places I've been to and seen and I've learned an incredible amount. I want the film to be this kind of discovery experience for all Canadians because I mean I, I was surprised by yeah just the vastness and the beauty and the incredible people that we met along the way. A lot of people want to live in Canada and we don't really appreciate that sometimes and I think the 360 technology actually plays into that because we kind of have to appreciate where we live when we see it all around us uh, either in the dome or in VR so it's one of those awakenings where we go, oh yeah, this is where we live and uh, we're pretty lucky to live here.